If you've visited a new website on your phone or computer, you've probably seen it. A notification informing you that the page is using cookies to track you and asking you to agree to let it happen. The site invites you to read its cookie policy, which let's be honest, you're probably not going to. And it may tell you that the tracking is to enhance your experience, even though it feels like it's a bit invasive. So what are these cookies and how are they good, but can also be a concern for all of us. When we're talking about cookies, I don't mean these real cookies, but internet cookies, also called web cookies or browser cookies or HTTP cookies. But in the digital world, they're just called cookies. A cookie is just a piece of information that a website stores on your device when you visit that website. This information is stored in a file located inside your web browser. Guess what the file is called? Well, it's often called cookies. So what do these cookies do? What is this information that gets saved on our devices? The purpose of a cookie is to help the website to keep track of your visit and remember certain information about you. Like what? For example, many online retailers, such as Amazon here, use cookies to keep track of the items in a user's shopping cart. Just as I'm exploring the site, you know, I'm looking through all these different products, I'm looking at all these board games, because I am a fan of board games, by the way. But while I'm doing that, it's still keeping track of what I've added in my shopping cart. And I actually have it here. I've added it a few days ago. And even though I'm you know, coming back after a couple days later, well, it's still keeping track that I've added this in here and I might want to purchase it. And you might wonder how it's doing that. Well, again, because this information is included in that cookie, which the website saved on my device. Without cookies, your shopping cart would basically just reset to zero. Every time you're clicking on a different link here on the site, your shopping cart will reset to zero. And that will make it difficult to buy anything online. I think it would make us all very frustrated consumers. And this is really only one of its applications. There are many different applications for cookies, such as session management that we just covered. So logins and shopping carts user privacy controls and settings, user profiling, segmentation, optimization, analytics, attribution, verification, mapping users across platforms, ads frequency capping, targeting and retargeting. So from all these applications, you can see that they can benefit you as the visitor of the website, as it makes your web browsing just a little bit more convenient and personalized, but also benefits the owner of the website as they can engage with that user better and provide them with a better user experience and hopefully, hopefully convert them to into repeat customers and consumers. I mean, often the intention of a website is to sell and they can sell to you better if they offer you a more tailored experience. Would you agree? So this is a win-win situation for both the website owner and its users. Now, especially since GDPR came into play, there is also more transparency of what information gets saved in your cookie and how the website will use that information. Do you remember this request of consent? If a website wants to place cookies on a device, they need to obtain consent. Otherwise, they're probably not GDPR compliant and could be subjected to some big fines. Please stand till the end of the video as I'll show you a free cookie scanner from Buick Pro that will show you how many cookies a website tracks on you. Okay, back to our consent. This is a compromise for both the website and its users. But what if I told you that websites have other ways of tracking this information about you as that user? Well, one such way is through a third party cookie. To understand what that is, let's clarify what the first party cookie is. The first party cookie is actually what we've described so far. You know, you visit a website, and the website stores a cookie on your device. A third party cookie on the other hand is not created by the website that you are visiting, but by another. Let's say that we're browsing, you know, BBC News and we have this ad here from, I guess, Canada Goose that we see here on the right hand side. 
well, the cookie that gets saved as a result of this ad loading up, you know, belongs to that advertisement's domain. So, may, I don't know, maybe canadagoose.ca. Then when you visit another site, which also contains an ad from canadagoose.ca, another cookie belonging to that domain is set. Eventually, both of these cookies will be sent to the advertiser when loading their advertisements. And the advertiser, in this case, Canada Goose, can then use these cookies to build up a browsing history of the user across all the different websites that displayed ads from them. And I think that we can agree that third-party cookies can bring in significant concerns about a user's privacy. So what can end users do to protect themselves? Now, most modern web browsers contain privacy settings that can block third-party cookies. And some now block all third-party cookies by default, such as the Apple Safari, and Firefox. Google Chrome actually also plans to start blocking third-party cookies by default, but that will be in 2023. Until then, as an end user, you can use these browsers or install an ad blocker, or I don't know, you, you can also use the private or incognito modes on your browser, or really change the cookie and tracking settings in your browser from the default settings. So as you can see, third-party cookies are on their way out and for good reasons. Now, third-party cookies can also be bad for website owners. For starters, they can keep getting blocked through the various means that I mentioned above. On the other hand, first-party cookies won't get blocked through those means. You also don't have as much control over third-party cookies as you do on first-party cookies. And I'm talking as you as a website owner. You're still with me here? You also don't have full ownership over them and you can't safeguard the data derived from it and protect your users as best as possible. And wouldn't we all want to do that? With first-party cookies, you can. Okay, how many times did I say cookies in this video? So if you have a website, you want to stop relying on third-party cookies and just focus more on first-party cookies. First-party cookies will help your website recognize visitors, automatically you know, log in users and personalize content without being intrusive or violating that user privacy. And trust me, wording that consent and writing that privacy policy can be confusing. Even analyzing all that first-party cookie data. But that's why there are services and tools like PeeWeek Pro to help us out. And by the way, I would like to thank PeeWeek Pro for sponsoring this video. Here's the free online cookie scanner from PeeWeek Pro. And all we have to do is just put in the website that we wanna check to see what type of cookies it's tracking. And then we're just going to enter our email here. And then we're just gonna click scan page. Okay, we have the result now in our email from PeeWeek Pro. Let's open the report. Let's see what it's saying. First party cookies, 10. Third party cookies, nada, zero. That's pretty good. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe as there's at least a new video released every week. Thank you.